Halo alkenes. This is a hydrocarbon that contains at least one halogen. Now to name them, what we have to do is identify the longest carbon chain that includes the halogen and this becomes the root or the parent alkane. You have to identify the halogens present. If there's two different kinds, you can list them in alphabetical order and the first letter gets the priority when numbering. So remember your alphabet. So numbering, we want to do the lowest number of possible combinations. And if there are other side groups, you're going to name them and number them accordingly, and it's going to be alphabetical. So let's do some examples. Okay, let's look at this example. We can I see here that we've got two chlorines. So what we have to do first is identify the longest carbon chain that contains the halogens. So the longest carbon chain here is three, and these chlorines are attached to carbon number one. So when we name this, the root is going to be propane for the three carbons, and we have chloro as our halogen, we've got two of them, so it's dichloro. And then, what carbon are they attached to? They're attached to carbon number one. This becomes 1,1-dichloropropane. One, one, we have accounted for all of the atoms present in this structure. Okay, next structure. We're going to see that we have two different halogens here. So what we have to do first is to identify our longest carbon chain containing the halogens. So the carbons that they are attached to. So this is a straight chain, so it's fairly simple. And so if we count those carbons, we can see that there are five carbons. So the root will be pentane. It's A-N-E because they're all single bonds. Now, we're going to list them alphabetically. So B comes before C, so bromo comes first. And chloro will come second. And we're going to use the lowest possible numbers. If we started counting, we would start counting from the end closest to the first halogen. So we're going to start in this case counting from the left. The, otherwise we will end up with a 3-4 combination. If we started counting from the right we would end up with a 3-4 combination. This way we end up with a 2-3 combination. So it is, the bromo is on the second carbon from the end, and the chloro, the chlorine, is on the third carbon from the end. So this is 2-bromo, 3-chloro-pentane. Okay, next example. Just going to move this up a little bit. Find the halogen. So here's the halogen. Now let's find our longest continuous carbon chain that contains the carbon that that is attached to. So if we go left to right, we have five carbons. If we follow left to right and then go up, we have six carbons. So our longest carbon chain includes the six carbons. That makes this a side group. So always find your longest carbon chain first and to do that you don't take your highlighter off the page. You can't jump around or finger whatever you're using. Okay, so because we have six, our root, our parent is hexane. 
and the fluorine is on the second carbon. Counting from the left, you want the lowest possible number. So start with the end closest to the fluorine. So the side groups are now our fluorine, so our fluoro. F comes before M, and the other side group is our methyl. So now we have to state which carbon those side groups are on. So the fluorine is on carbon number two, and the methyl group, you have to continue counting from the same direction. So left to right, the methyl group is on carbon number four. So our structure is 2-fluoro, 4-methyl, hexane. So drawing, you want to first identify how long your carbon chain is from the name. You draw your carbons and you'll place in your bonds. Then look at the prefixes, look at what, what comes before that and their numbers and place them appropriately. Okay, 2-bromopropane is our first example. So we can see from this that propane is our root, so we know we've got three carbons. So draw out your three carbons. Then put in all your bonds. You know each carbon makes four bonds. It says that our side group is bromo and it is on carbon number two. So find carbon number two. This would be carbon number one. This would be carbon number two. And place in your halogen. And then put in all your hydrogens. So there you go, 2-bromopropane. Of course, there would be an isomer for this, and that would be called 1-bromopropane. The bromine group could be on a end carbon, so carbon number 1. All right, next example. 2-bromo-5-chloro-4-ethyl-nonine. So that's a lot of carbons. So our root, our longest carbon chain, is going to be 9. So draw out your carbons, put in your bonds, and get ready to place your side groups. Why well, always draw out my carbon chain first, then I go back in and put in my bonds. Then I pick a side to be my one carbon. I always usually pick left to right. So on my second carbon, we have a bromine group. So we're just going to put a bromine, doesn't matter if you put it on the top or the bottom, on carbon number five, I've got a chlorine atom. So going from the same direction, one, two, three, four, five. So this is my, where my chlorine goes. It's my number five. Just to be different, I'm going to put it on the top. It doesn't matter if it's on the top or the bottom because you can rotate these atoms because they're single bonds. So you can rotate around the carbon-carbon linkage. Now, on carbon number four, we have an ethyl group. So ethyl is an alkyl group with two carbons, so I'm just going to move this all up so I have room. And I'm going to draw my carbons going down just to make it a little bit tidier. So there's my alkyl group of two carbons. So now all you have to do is go back in and put in all your hydrogen atoms. Always double check if you're doing a structural diagram, structural formula, that you have each carbon having four bonds for an alkane and all your hydrogens are present. 
Of course, if the question doesn't specify how to draw them, you could draw using line diagrams. So three carbons, propane, would be one, two, three. There's the three carbon chain propane, and on the second carbon, I have a bromine. That's all you would have to draw. For this one, 2 bromo 5 chloro 4 ethyl nonane, you want your carbon chain first. So 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And basically, when we draw them, we draw them zigzag due to the shape that they make. So on my second carbon in, I've got a bromine. On my fifth, so one, two, three, four, five. On my fifth carbon, I have a chlorine. And on my fourth one, I have an ethyl. So that's one, that's methyl, that's ethyl. So that is a line diagram for 2-bromo, 5-chloro, 4-ethyl, no name. Physical properties. What are their boiling points, densities, melting points, solubilities? That's physical properties. So what are they like? So only the halomethanes can be dissolved in water, and that's because they're small. All the rest are going to be insoluble. Boiling points are higher than their corresponding alkanes because they have stronger intermolecular forces. If there's just London dispersion forces, they're stronger because bromine, iodine, chlorine, and fluorine contain more electrons than hydrogen. So therefore, there's stronger London dispersion forces. If you have chlorine and fluorine, you also have dipole-dipoles interactions because you have dipoles within your structure. So boiling points are a little bit higher, but most of them are not soluble in water. And that's halo alkanes.